Hello there folks, today we are taking a look at the game called Vanuatu. It's the second edition and is published by Quinnet Games and the designer is Alan Epron. The game is about an archipelago of Vanuatu. You try to prosper, you try to get reputation, but in the middle of the ocean it's really hard to do because you don't have many resources at all. So you will try to manage them as well as you can. You might try to export some goods, you'll try to catch fish, you maybe you'll find some rare treasures, and you will have tourists. So you'll guide them around and show their rare and really famous sand drawings. Yeah, let's take a look at how the game works. I will not go into every detail about the rules of Vanuatu, but Vanuatu is played over the course of eight rounds, and each round you will use your action discs, five action discs, in order to plan your whole turn. Uh, and you will put this action disc on top there. You will also pick characters, which will give you something cool, special abilities. And then you will resolve your actions in turn order and depending on the majority. As you can see here, I, I've done a small setup there. Um, these are the ocean tiles that are in the setup and the island tile printed there, where we have our boats, some treasures, some fish, resources. but. As the game progresses, there will be more tiles coming up here and eventually, in the last round, everything will be filled up with islands and oceans and such. But, maybe we'll take a look at the actions closer, what we can do on our turn. Let me do a quick run through of the actions that you have available and how to resolve them. So basically, here you have an action where you can send resources with the ship, pay the money and get the points. Here you can hunt for treasure, if you're on a tower with the treasure, you will get uh, the tile with the number of um, the chests that are on the tile here. So which means you will get a tile with two, you will take one of the treasures away, and then now there is only one treasure available tile. And you will get points at the end of the game for this tile. You can also move your ship, one to three spaces, you're going to pay one to three coins. And you, you manage your money here. So you can have at most 9 money. If you go over 9, you will get 5 extra points, but the money will be resetted. So here you can build a house for 3 money. You're just going to pay 3 money and you're going to build a house. And the house will help you sell fish if you're near the house. And also if you get the tourists here at the end of the game, the house will score you extra points. Now here we also have these 4 tokens which are just some uh, bonuses, extra bonuses. This is the rest action. Uh, you can get the first player token, you can get extra points, extra money. So, there's also an action where you attract tourists. So there are some tourists available each turn and you will just uh, get the tourists on one of the islands and uh, you will s just get, get, get the money depending on how many houses are on that island. Doesn't matter if it's your color or the other color. For example, here I will get one money. So you can also go and catch fish. You'll catch fish with the same um, mechanic as with the treasures. Here I will get the tile with number two and I'm going to remove the fish, one of the fish. I can also sell fish and if I'm near my house I can sell fish for the fixed price of three. If I sell, if I'm the first to sell, the price will drop down and the next player to sell this round will have to sell his fish for two. Uh, Vatus each. There's also a last action is a drawing where you can just get extra points, three extra points if you do a drawing. You have rectangular spaces for the houses and um, you have circle spaces for the drawings on each island. And as the island will build up you will get more of these spaces. So that's a quick run through of the actions. Actions are resolved in turn order and based on the majority. Let's say I'm in an orange player and I'm the first player. So I'm going to choose one of the spaces where I have majority in action discs and I can do that. I cannot do the action where I don't have majority in action discs. So for example, I'm going to choose this space. But there is a tie, but the tie is broken depending on who is nearest to the first player and the first player himself, of course. So I can do, for example, this action here. And the interesting part is that when I remove my action discs from that action spot, then the here, for example, purple will get the majority now and he can do this action now that he couldn't do before. And so on. Where you have majority, you will remove your action disc. If you don't have majority in any of the actions, you still must remove 
discs from, from one of the action spots, but you will not get that action, which is really bad, but sometimes it occurs. I'm just gonna briefly show you some of the characters that we have in this game that you will choose at the beginning of each turn that will give you, grant you special ability. For example, this one gives you five points instead of the three points when you do a sand drawing. This one will give you extra money when you hunt for treasure. Uh, this lady will allow you to sell fish even if you don't have your house or you're not near your house. This one will allow you to, allow you to do one action even if you don't have any majority in any of the actions. This one will uh, give you extra points uh, when you catch fish. And this one will let you move for free instead of paying one to three coins. And so on, there are more characters. And the scoring works like that. So first of all, you will get three extra points when you have a first player token at the end of the game. You will also get points based on how much money you have. For your three Vatus, you will get one point. You will also get points for the treasure tiles. You will sum them and then double them. And that, that's how many points you will get. So here we have 7 times 2, 14 points. And the main thing are the houses and tourists. Each tourist will give each of your houses 2 points. Which means that if I have, for example, I have 2 of my houses. I have 4 tourists here. It doesn't matter who brought them here, but there are 4 tourists. 1, 2, 3, 4. Each of them gives 2 points for each of my houses. So it means these 4 tourists give 8 points for this house and eight points for the other house in a total of 16. And you will look at the other islands and sum them together. And then the end, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Let me show you briefly how the expansion Rising Water works, which comes with the Vanuatu second edition. On the second, fourth and sixth and eighth turn, you will roll a die. And after that many actions, uh, the islands will start sinking. For each ocean tile around the islands, you will put the blue disc on the islands. Whenever the, the island has five of these blue discs, the island has sunk, it's destroyed, everything on the island is destroyed, wiped out, and whenever three islands are sunk during the game, the game ends up automatically and everyone loses. In order to prevent that, you will build dikes around the island in order to, pro to protect it. So you have to work cooperatively, although it's a really competitive game. But you have to build them in order to prevent the island from sinking. So we always start with components and artwork. And Vanuatu in this sense is absolutely exceptional. Mm -hmm. It will always like catch attention of people walking past when you in, have the in the local shop or anywhere yeah wherever you play on the shelf the board as you've seen is absolutely gorgeous the artwork is amazing and components there are lots of you know like the source are like special shaped not just cubes um like in this fish. sense vanuatu is a perfect example of a good kickstarter game because it can it usually can start off with just cubes and discs you know but the stretch goals, the unlock stretch goals actually created all those special shapes, which is like super. I, I don't know if it was a uh, Kickstarter game. I, it, it wasn't. The first edition wasn't. So Second edition. Yeah, I like how this was a fully produced game without the Kickstarter. So it was probably well done, but needed an upgrade regarding components. And the stretch goals and the Kickstarter helped it a lot. So that was really cool. Yeah. So regarding the strategy and tactics in this game, I'm going towards the strategy because in my opinion, you have so many things that you can see ahead and you can plan ahead and how you score, you can approach a sort of a strategy of will you go all out to the, for the tourists? Will you hunt the treasures, very many treasures? Or will you uh, sail and, and catch a lot of fish and sell a lot of fish to get the circles of, of money, of, of bank and points? So I feel like there is a lot of strategy and how you perceive the, um, the character selections and such. Yeah. I'd say good luck with that. You can plan <laughs> a lot, but you know, you will rarely ever get all the actions you planned. You will be constantly screwed up by your opponents. So in my yeah, opinion, the game is most about tactics because you will, you will have to like constantly adapt to situation. You have to be really flexible because you will not get the actions you want. And you mm -hmm, constantly yeah. have to change. And although it may sound a little bit random, if Alina talks about yeah. the tactical aspect, 
It isn't in my opinion, because there are ships which are a little bit random and how many tourists come up. And that's basically it. The, the, uh, the tiles come up in the order and you see them ahead and you see most of the things ahead and the archipelago builds up. Uh, and it feels that random is minimal and there's yeah. a lot of planning. And I agree. If tactical planning or strategical, you will decide yourself. Tactical. But there's minimal random in my opinion. No, and no, I agree. I totally agree with but, that. But this minimal random means also a lot of planning, which means also AP problem, in my opinion. I think what that's you think about that, that way. That's yeah. pretty much always that way. Like, the less minimal you have, the more, the more you have to think. And the one maybe bad thing about the game, or like, depends how, how you're fine with that, is thinking and downtime. It is you bad. definitely have quite a lot of downtime here. Because you have to plan... Um, the actions and this part is like so important in the game that yeah. you will spend time thinking. You plan all your round ahead. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you will spend definitely quite a lot of time thinking. So. Yeah, and there's there's the thing that when when somebody's uh, trying to put the action tokens down, mm -hmm. I cannot uh, plan before he does his uh, things because I need to see where he goes so I can counter that or whatever. You know, and then I have to wait for him to finish his turn order to do mine and so on. So. Yes, um, um, like, but that's exactly the thing why it can be like super AP, uh, because you can't count everything ahead. Yeah. You will count like your next two actions and then you'll wait for other person to do something and then you'll think f further. Yeah. So, yeah. On the other hand, it, it encourages the maximizing of a turn, but... That's my opinion. But uh, if we talk about the mechanic of, of the action selection, of the action retrieving and such, that's really cool. I liked it very much. Uh, you select action by action tokens and then you see whoever has the majority in action will do this action. But by retrieving action points from, uh, from the action, you will, create, you will maybe create an action for another person there. And then he can do this action. And which is, in my opinion, really cool, really interesting, engaging, and can be mean as well. Sometimes. That's quite different. Like, overly, this mechanic of choosing actions and, like, let's say, action order is really unique. I haven't seen anything like that. But we actually had to adopt a little bit on the very first mm -hmm. game. Like, you don't tend to think that way. But, yeah... And like the way Ideal dimension that like the way you retrieve the action discs, it it no it's it, it it's not like it can be mean. It is really mean. It's okay. like super yeah. mean. And I kind of think it's part of the game. I think it was like meant to be that way, yeah. because you will want to constantly screw with your opponents, yeah. and you will do like if you, there is no difference for you which action to take, you will do the action that will like benefit you, but do something bad for opponent. Yeah, that, uh, that will block the opponent action. And then on his turn, he can't do anything. And then he has to retrieve his action point without doing anything. And that's, that's mean. That's really yeah. mean. And sometimes you end up uh, doing only one action in a turn. And that's really sad as well. But it, it, it can be a punishing game, in my opinion. Because you need to do at least two actions every turn to stay on, 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 to on top on water. Or, I mean, like... Yes, water. so the game, I agree, this game is quite punishing. So if you do a mistake, the game will punish you. But uh, it's not like you feel that you did one crucial mistake and now you're going to most definitely lose. It's not like mm -hmm. that. But it's, it most probably will screw with your next, next round, for example. Or, or you'll be out of money and now you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, regarding the interaction and... The scoring is very interactive, in my opinion, because uh, you have the, in the end, you see the basic, the, the, I mean, the main thing you score are the tourists and huts and maximized by whatever points in there, I mean, that, that thing there. But during the game, you will put the, up, you pull, you'll put the tourists down in the, in the island where your huts are, and maybe there will be huts of your opponents. And by putting the tourists there, you're giving points to yourself and to the uh, to opponents as well. That you will get at the end of the game mm -hmm. and i like that that's an interesting scoring mechanic because if you have more huts than your opponent on that island you will benefit yourself more than your opponent which means maybe if you give few points to your opponent doesn't really matter because you will get twice as more you know and i, I like this uh, scoring a lot but overly there is like the, the fact that you have to build 
hot and bring tourists, mm -hmm. not just one of them. Yeah. Like it's uh, first, it might be slightly confusing. Oh, I built a hut already, so I'm, I'm gonna score. That's a strategic part of the game. So yeah. that's it. Yeah. Let's say um, there is a one small poor, like badly done thing in the game, and it's iconography. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, let's say 50% of them is quite confusing. We've played several games at even in like a third, fourth, fifth, whatever. You might confuse, for example, catching fish and selling it. Or there are like few more things that are like, yeah, yeah. doesn't really yeah, make Yeah, bringing, bringing tourists that you will get the money for and building a hut has almost this, the character and the action space yeah. have the same icon for two different actions, the yeah. same icon. Almost, Why? Almost, it's like there is Not a symbol of almost. a hut and there is a symbol of money, but there is like a different mark. But the iconography them. is the same, completely yeah. the same in them. It's, it's totally confusing. Yeah. But whatever the iconography, you can go through that. So if you play it for at least two times, something like that. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the replayability. I think the replayability is quite high. Mm -hmm. Depends on how Archipelago ends up being and what the players do, what actions you do. Because there is so much in, in interaction between the players and so, much, uh, so many actions and characters to choose and what you will approach, what combination of mm -hmm. character plus the actions you will do and such. There is so much to choose from which creates a lot of replayability, although it can feel a little bit samey maybe after 20 games, but who... <laughs> come on. Uh, we, who we... nowadays plays 20 times the same game? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Normal people, not us. But yeah, um, also the player count. Um, um, I think... Oh, you want play... to... yes. Replayability, okay, sorry. Yeah, I really do like the replayability is actually quite high for one more reason that there is like you score different things it's not like just a hut and and tourists there is more of the things that you score mm -hmm. and the way you approach the game can be different for example having the first player talking constantly is quite powerful but next round you want to try something different mm -hmm. or like every single time i've played i was like yeah i know it's like this part is easy. i've tried that i want to try new mm -hmm. i want to try this one now and so the playability also depends on the players yeah. themselves yeah. And I'm usually not that person, that type of a person, but in here I really want to try. Mm -hmm. But uh, now about the player count. I think, uh, first of all, we haven't played the two player game because uh, I, I read the rules for two players and they sounded so weird, so confusing that I didn't even care about them. I'm sorry, but I think like two player game is not for, for this thing here. It's maybe a dummy player smash, something like that. Uh, we played also. We played the four-player game, which was the best for me at least, and the three-player game, which was quite good as well. Mm -hmm. But the four-player game was uh, more of that uh, tackling each other, more of that screwing over each other, and spreading out on different actions, which makes you choose many more different actions than with three players, in my opinion. Which is better, I think. And I don't know. It's a little bit more crowded means a little bit more interaction. If it's mean anyway, then let it be mean in all the, in all the fronts. I'd say the three fronts. and four, both good. Not that big difference. So it is good with three, it mm -hmm. is good with four. Maybe four, really slightly better. This game also has an expansion. I think it was Rising Waters. Yeah. We tried that. So the rules mentioned that you have to master the base game before playing the expansion. So we thought, yeah, for we're good, let's, let's try. try, but no, no, we're <laughs> definitely not good enough. So the Rising Water expansions is super hard, and I yes. personally don't even like purely imagine how to win. Yeah. We lost by the, yeah. so that all... basically, basically the island is sinking. You need to build the barricades. The thing is, in my opinion, like why I didn't like the expansion and why I feel this expansion is even bad in my opinion, but maybe I need to play it more to understand. It's that because if I, can, if I see that I'm behind in the game and the, with the expansion, if three islands sink, everyone will lose the game. I can do sort of a king making and make and not cooperate with the others, not build the barricades and make the islands sink. And so we will all lose. If I'm behind in the points, I see that I cannot win the game anyway. Of course, it's in uh, other games as well, but in this game, it's so crucial that you can basically decide that you will not cooperate and the islands will sink and everyone will lose. And it uh, saddens me a lot. 
I don't agree. It's not really black and white like that. It's not, it's not like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. You all lose. No, it's, it's not as easy. It's if we like, will not cooperate together, mm. then, then that's, that basically, you, you saw, we didn't have a chance. We didn't cooperate. We didn't have a chance. But yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the overall feeling of the game, uh, let's put the expansion aside. The game is great. Uh, it has a lot of tension, uh, in interaction. If you don't like interactive game, if you don't like mean game, this is not for you. <laughs> yeah, mean yeah punishing. skip it, skip it no. right away. But it has the great components for me. It has the great gameplay. It's rather heavy. And I usually don't like heavy, but this one is, is an exception because mm -hmm. it's so easy to, it was easy to teach mm -hmm. uh, and learn. And the rules are rather simple. It's just mm -hmm. basically how the gameplay works. It, it's, it's hard to master. So I like this game a lot. I like this game a lot as well. It's super engaging. Uh, it's perfect game and interaction. So you kind of do your own stuff, but you, inter um, you interact a lot. Yeah. So yeah, I perfect. I personally felt after like few plays, I was like, oh, I want more. I just want more. I want to mm -hmm. play again. So yeah, I didn't expect that I would love it so much. I, I really did not, but I love it. Yeah, so let's go to the, our uh, dice ratings. I give this game 8 dice out of 10. I give this game 8 dice out of 10. See how bad I roll? <laughs>